probe carrying the first asteroid dust ever collected has crashed back down to Earth in the outback of South Australia. Joining us now in the studio is Dr Morris Jones, space analyst and author, to tell us how the landing went. Uh, Dr Jones, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Firstly, tell us how exactly did it come down to Earth? Was it an, an easy, did it go as planned? Everything it... went as planned and that's a lot better than mm. I expected. Mm. Uh, this spacecraft has had more problems than Apollo 13 and it was lucky just to make it back to Earth, but I thought it wouldn't survive the re-entry and uh, I was very relieved to find that it did. Tell us about something uh, about the mission itself, what it's hoping to achieve and what it's done. Okay, this is the first spacecraft to land uh, near an asteroid or touch its surface and retrieve some samples and return those samples to Earth. Nothing's ever, ever been done like that before. We've never had a piece of an asteroid on the Earth before that uh, has been collected by a spacecraft. Mm. How and far out? Well, it's uh, somewhere out beyond the orbit of uh, roughly uh, the same distance as Mars. The, these things move around, so it's not the main asteroid belt, so it's a fairly close one. And it's taken the spacecraft on a journey, a round trip of about 6 billion kilometres wow, just nice. to get back. And it was launched in 2003, so just tell us in terms of the length of time in space, how significant is that? OK, it's a very long time for mm. a little spacecraft like that to be on such a mission. It uh, didn't reach the asteroid until 2005, and it was supposed to come home two years later, but it had all sorts of malfunctions, and it's taken it a lot longer to limp back to Earth uh, than it should have. So the Japanese must be feeling so good about them. They're thrilled. They're, yes. they're, they're posting cute little messages onto the internet about sort of calling it like a little person and <laughs> cheering it on. You, you know the way the Japanese get excited about things like <laughs> yes. this. Uh, so they've definitely personified the spacecraft. And uh, I think there'll be a lot of smiling faces for a mission that a lot of people thought would never return back to Earth. And I was intrigued to note that uh, there was a bit of protocol about how it was to be approached when it actually came back down to Earth. Can you tell us a bit about that? OK. Uh, I mean, part of it involved a bit of respect to the tribal elders. Who, who are in the area, so that there were sort of traditional protocols, but there were also safety issues in terms of making sure uh, that you didn't damage the capsule and uh, that you handled it safely after its retrieval. So a lot of factors involved in bringing it back, and uh, very soon it will be on a plane back to Japan. And the material it's collected, what, what use will that be? OK, we don't know how much is on board. We don't think it collected very much, but even just a little bit uh, will tell you a lot, because this is material that can't be found on Earth, it's left over from the early formation of the solar system. So it's a bit like having a time machine to see events as they were billions of years ago, probably before the Earth even existed. Stunning. Morris Jones, thanks so much Thank for coming in. Great to talk.